is the morning office for February 24th. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Hear our voice, O Lord, according to your faithful love. According to your judgment, give us life. Blessed are you, God of compassion and mercy. To you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of our sin, your light breaks forth like the dawn, and your healing springs up for deliverance. As we rejoice in the gift of your saving help, sustain us with your bountiful spirit and open our lips to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and one mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. The portion of the Psalter appointed for today is Psalm 119, verses 1 to 8. Happy are they whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Happy are they who observe his decrees and seek him with all their hearts, who never do any wrong, but always walk in his ways. You laid down your commandments that we should fully keep them, Oh, that my ways were so direct that I might keep your statutes. Then I should not be put to shame when I regard all your commandments. I will thank you with an unfeigned heart when I have learned your righteous judgments. I will keep your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. This very day the Lord your God is commanding you to observe these statutes and ordinances, so observe them diligently with all your heart and with all your soul. Today you have obtained the Lord's agreement to be your God and for you to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes, his commandments, and his ordinances, and to obey him. Today the Lord has obtained your agreement to be his treasured people, as he promised you, and to keep all his commandments for him to set you high above all nations that he has made, in praise and in fame and in honor, and for you to be a people holy to the Lord your God, as he promised. The Word of the Lord. Jesus, Savior of the world, come to us in your mercy. We look to you to save and help us. By your cross and your life laid down, you set your people free. We look to you to save and help us. When they were ready to perish, you saved your disciples. We look to you to come to our help. In the greatness of your mercy, loose us from our chains. Forgive the sins of all your people. Make yourself known as our Savior and mighty Deliverer. Save and help us that we may praise you. Come now and dwell with us, Lord Christ Jesus. Hear our prayer and be with us always. And when you come in your glory, make us to be one with you and to share the life of your kingdom. My thought for today regarding silence is again a thought from Robert Cardinal Sara, who says that interior silence is the end of judgments, passions, and desires. Somehow being still inside ourselves is letting go of the ways that we try to compare ourselves to others, the way that we try to compete with others. And really, as spiritual people, we should admit that what we're trying to do in some way is to prove that God loves us more or that we love God more, that in some way we are holier than those around us. All of this is, of course, a form of sin, that we would compare ourselves with others, that we would try to put ourselves above or beneath, for that matter, anyone else. And so the interior stillness that we look for is in its own way, a silencing of sin, a way of quieting those voices in us that lead us to behave in ways that are not godly and indeed that are not even fully human, the ways that draw us away from the love of God, away from the image of God that we were born to be in. So once again, a useful reminder that interior stillness has many, be- has many benefits. In this case, perhaps a way of getting away from those habits that draw us away from God. 
I ask your prayers as always today for the day, for the world, and for the church. I ask your prayers for us, that as we share our faith with others, we will do it with humility, with kindness, and with the desire to proclaim to the world what it is that God has done for us, not that we have done for ourselves, in no way that it should be that we are better than anyone else, but rather God has done so much for us, has blessed us so richly, we can only share it. Pray that on this day, each of us will have that opportunity. I ask your prayers for the world, for all those places where disorder and disharmony reign, all those places where the human desire to get one up on others operates on a grand scale and results in the misery of millions. And I ask you to pray for the church, that it will act humbly in the world, that it will see itself as the hands of Christ rather than anything exalted, that in all of its doings it will be the humble servant of the Lord, the humble servant of God's purposes in the world. O oh God, by your word you marvelous, marvelously carry out the work of reconciliation. Grant that in our Lenten fast we may be devoted to you with all our hearts and united with one another in prayer and holy love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May God, our Redeemer, show us compassion and love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.